will be learning the yaw dance without stepping on anyone's toes. Uh, first of all, bonjour. Uh, my name is Anabella, Anabella Spinelli. I work as a software engineer in Typeform, and we do what we call a conversational data collection, which is a, just a fancy word for online forms that are nice with the user. Um, so, how did I get here? Um, in Typeform, I work as a part of the team in charge of developer experience, and when we were starting out as a team, there was a lot of talk about OAuth, and this somehow caught my attention, and so I wanted to learn about it and try to implement it for the first time uh, while using Typeform's documentation and our own developer platform. Um, so this talk is about my first experience with OAuth, and what I learned from it, and what we learned as a team uh, about the experience that we were providing. So, um, the first question that I needed to answer is, what is OAuth? And so, here I have a smart definition that I'm going to try to read to you, and it sounds like this. OAuth stands for Open Authorization. It's a framework that enables a third-party application to obtain limited access to an HTTP service on behalf of a resource owner by orchestrating an approval interaction between the resource owner and the HTTP service. Did you get that? Um, okay, so the easy definition is that it's a process, it's like a set of instructions between two applications with the final purpose of obtaining or granting access to private user data. So one of the applications will be the requesting application and the other one will be the provider. And it may sound a bit insecure, but it's actually designed to be a secure process. So it has basically two use cases. The first one is just authentication, and it's this thing that you've used probably a million times to log in into new services. And then the second one is what I call feature integration, and this means that the requesting application will be, well, requesting, data from the provider on a recurrent basis in order to provide some sort of enhanced feature or functionality that the provider does not have. And for this to happen, I learned that the requesting application needs to be registered in the provider's platform so that it knows who's asking for information. And so in this process you will have to provide some sort of an application name, uh, maybe a logo or something like that, and most importantly, a thing called a redirect URI. So this is the most important piece of information in this registration, and it's because during the off dance, while the apps go backwards and forwards between them, the <coughs> provider will use this address to notify my app that the user has granted me access and that I can to request its information. Okay, so when I register my app, I will get two things called a client ID and a client secret. So these work sort of as the application's credentials, and so the client ID is sort of like the application's username, and it can be shared through public channels. On the other hand, the client secret is sort of like the application's password and it needs to be shared through private channels on a secure connection. And so I used all this to try to make what I ended up calling the simplest OAuth app that I could think of. And it looked something like this. It's just an HTML with a link and the title. And when the user clicks on it, it will start the OAuth dance and it will finally try to produce this screen with the information that I got about its, uh, their account on the provider side, which in my case was Typeform. Um, so before we go into this journey, I wanted to share a couple of concepts that I will be using, and I call them uh, pain points and blessings. So imagine that you have your developer on one side, and on the other side of the road, they have the thing they are trying to make, their goal, their objective. So anything that you do that pushes them back, that makes them uh, do rework or try to debug something and that makes him try to go again and read how it really is, it's a pain point. It, it will push them back in, from the thing that you're trying to accomplish. <coughs> On the other hand, anything that you do to help them and to enable them, any tips that you can share or heads up, 
uh, will be a blessing and it will push them forward what they're trying to do. Okay, so the first step that I needed to do was register a client in Siphon's platform. And so I find quite some pain points at this point and I get to say this because now we have sort of cleaned our act and the page looks way better and it's easier to use. Um, but the first thing that I found is that it was asking me for a lot of non-crucial information, things that I really didn't need to care about at this point. So it would ask me for, well, the application name, a description, a website, a logo URL, and at the very bottom of it, I would get to fill in the redirect URI. And if you remember, this is the only important data at this point. And so all these fields were mandatory, and I had to fill them so many times, over and over again. And, well, you may wonder why was I doing this so many times. The fact is that we didn't have view or edit screens. And, well, it may seem obvious uh, that if you get to create something, you get to review it or maybe edit it. Uh, but we didn't have that, so every time that I wanted to try something different, or if I forgotten what my redirect URI was, or whatever problem that I ran into, the only option that I had was to delete the app and create it again. And this is because mainly we weren't showing the only important piece of information there. We were just showing the client ID and the client secret. Um, so the next next uh, question that I needed to answer was what is the all of dance? So how does this process look like? Well, which are the steps? And for that, I went to Typeform's uh, developer portal. And there, I, I found a very complete and thorough guide uh, about how to implement an OAuth client, a very like step-by-step -step description that I want to go through what, what were the things that I got right and some of the things that needed some improvement. So, First off, what were the DevDocs blessings that I found? Um, the first thing that I found is that at the very top of the guide, there was a table that looked like this. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, it had the basic information that you need if you already know what you are doing. And maybe you're using a library, you have a config file, you just fill this in, and you don't have to understand any of it. It will just work. And so this wasn't very useful for me because I was very inexperienced at this point, but I could tell that it, it would be really good for someone that doesn't have to dig into the whole guide and the tutorial to find the basic endpoints that they need to know. But my favorite thing about this guide was this, and you probably can't see it very much, but we're going to be using it, and it's a diagram of the interactions between my client's application the user and Typeform servers. And it's written in a very Typeform-y conversational way and it provided me a guide, and a, I mean a map, um, to see where I was standing and what was going on and what I needed to make happen next. Um, but then there were some problems, some things that could have been improved about uh, the dev docs. And so the first thing was that the actual guide, the tutorial, its text, wasn't referencing the map. It was making no mentions, no references to where I was standing in this map. So I had to make the connection by myself. I would stare at the map and try to figure out where I was and then find it on the text and see what needed to happen next. Um, then we had more I would say technical information than practical. So we had a lot of information about endpoints and content types and arguments, but we weren't explaining what needed to happen and how to make it happen. And lastly, uh, we didn't have a troubleshooting section. So there was no part of the guide that could tell me what could go wrong and how to find out and how to debug the thing to make it do the thing that I wanted it to do. Okay, so at this point we can do like a halfway summary. Um, we have been through the OAuth definition, both the smart one and the easy one. 
we have been through the client registration and its pain points, and also the developer guide and what it got right and what it could have improved. So this means that we are ready to dance. Um, there are four steps in the OAuth dance. Those are authorize, consent, redirection, and token. And we're going to be examining each one of those next. So the first one is the authorized request. And as you can see in the diagram, it's an interaction starting from my client's application, the thing that I'm trying to implement, and it's going to Typeform through the user's browser. So that's why the arrow has a, like an elbow there. And it looks something like this. It's just basically that link that we saw in the browser, and it has some information about the application and what it's requesting. So what this link represents is something like this. My app is saying, hey Typeform, it's me. I want to access this information on this user's account. Can you ask them for me? And then let me know at this address, thank you. So what we can identify from this conversation is that my application is identifying itself with its client ID, which is going through a public channel like the browser. It's also repeating the redirect URI for verification purposes, so that Typeform can check if it's the same one that got registered. And it's also saying which information it wants access to. So how does it do that? It will use something called scopes. Basically, scopes are just permissions. It's a list of strings, usually in the format of an entity and an action that you need to perform. So in our case, we have accounts read, we have forms read, and then we have themes write because we need to modify or create themes in the user's account. And so if everything in this link is correct and valid, when the user clicks it, Typeform will generate what's called a consent screen. So again, as you can see in the diagram, it's an interaction from Typeform to the user and back, and again, through the user's browser. And it looks something like this. So it will have basic information about the app and, and about the user that's requesting the information. It will have a list of scopes so that the user can review them and then just call to actions to accept or decline. And this is what the consent screen will look like in Typeform if everything that in that link was correct. Now, if anything was wrong, it will look something like this. And oh my god, this was so frustrating because I would get this blank, blank screen so many times and I didn't have any idea what was wrong. And I would go into the network tab, into the console tab, and there was absolutely nothing. And it took me a lot of time to realize that if I looked into the source code of this thing, then the error was there. And okay, it was an error that I didn't really understand at the time, but at least I could go ask somebody or Google it or try to find what is missing, what is wrong. Um, okay, so, but let's say that everything in my link is finally correct and that the user accepts to grant me these permissions, so what's next? The next step is called the redirection. So this is where the redirect URI comes into play. Uh, it's an interaction from Typeform to my application, to my application's redirect URI endpoint, and again, it's through the user's browser. So it basically looks something like this. It's hitting my redirect uh, endpoint and sending a temporary code that my app needs to capture and then use in the following and final step. So that is the token request. And as you can see in this lovely diagram, which is so accurate, um, this will be an interaction starting from my client's application and going straight to Typeform without going through the user's browser because this is a very secure connection. So it will look something like this. It's again a request to an endpoint in Typeform's API and it will have the client secret, the temporary code that I just got, and again the redirect URI for verification purposes. And what this means is something like this. Okay, Typeform, here's my client secret and that code that you just sent me. Also my redirect URI so you know that I'm 100% legit. Can I have a token now? 
And so Typhon will reply with the token because Typhon is nice like that. So this means that our token is here and we can finally use it. But what is the token good for? What does it do? So every time my application wants to request something from Typeform, it will send this token, which Typeform will use to identify which user does the data belong to, what application is requesting it, and most importantly, if it has the rights or the permissions to request that data. Okay, so to wrap up off, it looks something like this. We have the authorized uh, request from my client's application to Typeform through the browser, then consent screen from Typeform to the user and back in the browser, then the redirection from Typeform to my application through the browser, and finally our top secret token request from my application to Typeform and back. So this means my app now knows my user's name and I am very, very happy that this process is over. Um, so what did we learn from all of this experience? What did I learn as, as a junior developer and what uh, did the team learn? So the first thing is that it is a great idea to test your guides with junior devs. And what I mean by this is that I feel developer documentation should be aimed at junior developers. So that is a person that has some sort of technical knowledge, so you don't need to explain what a variable is or an if statement, but they don't know how to do this thing, and you need to take them by the hand and not let them go at any step. And you will find a lot of blind spots if you test your documentation with juniors. Um, then just having descriptive error states. So, at some situations, you may be limited uh, by security concerns, but there's always something that you can show them so that they can start trying to debug what might be wrong. Then, giving people a map that they can follow. So, no matter how detailed, how step-by-step, -step, character by character your guide is, people will get lost. And if you give them a map that can relate to the instructions, then they can find their way back to where they got lost. And well, finally, just providing well-finished dev tools. So this is our uh, client registration page right now. It's, it just asks you for three things. The application name, its website, and the redirect URI. And that's all you really need. If you want, you can add more things later. Uh, also, we have a nicer, nicer list view that's easier to interact with. And of course, we have an edit screen with, where you can review the data and change it if you need to. All right, so all this tinkering around with auth, it got me thinking. And there we have our developer again. And they have, they have an idea. They have something they want to accomplish. And so... If we pave the road to their goal with roadblocks and detours and things they have to think and rethink again, we're just pushing back and this means that any pain point that we have as a product will be someone else's advantage if they can offer a product that's similar but it's easier to use or easier to understand. Um, on the other side, if we provide blessings and we push people forward and we help them get where, where they are going, um, this will be good for the people trying to create the thing because they will get there faster and more easily. And it will also be good for us because we will get basically more users and a better reputation as a product that can be easily integrated with. Um, okay, so... These are my resources if you want to read on, on the subject. And that's it for me. Here's my links if you want to.